This is the fastest high-speed train in Japan. Running at up to 320 km per hour will speed up to the far north of Japan's Honshu Island before crossing into the world's longest undersea tunnel, taking us all the way up to Japan's beautiful winter paradise, Hokkaido. This is the pinnacle of Japanese high-speed trains, so join me as we travel on the super-fast E5 series Shinkansen to Shin Hakodate Hukulto. Good morning from Tokyo Station, the heart of the Japanese high-speed rail network. Serving everything from Tokyo's local commuter railways, metro lines, to faster regional long-distance services and the iconic Shinkansen high-speed trains, Tokyo Station is one of the world's mega rail hubs. Approaching from the east, we enter the station at one of the station's six main entry points, at the Marunouchi Central Entrance. Every departure port here depicts a different group of train line departures. For services heading towards Hokkaido, you want to look at the leftmost one. To enter the station complex, you will need to have your ticket ready to pass through the barriers. If you haven't already, you can use the machines here. However, as I already have my ticket and reservations collected, I can simply just insert this into the barrier. Inside the station, you will find everything from coin lockers, to large shopping arcades. There are also plenty of restrooms. And as we are in Japan, of course there's plenty of vending machines as well. With so many different lines and levels, it's crucial that you follow the signs to reach your platform. Fortunately, the station is well signposted in both Japanese and English. For Shinkansen to Hokkaido, we want to follow the green signs for the Tohoku Shinkansen. We are catching the 820 Hayabusa service all the way to Shin Hakodate Hukulto, which is on track 21. Shinkansen platforms are behind a separate gate line inside of the main station gate line. This means you need to have your ticket ready again for the gates. But I personally love doing this, so that's no problem for me. Oh no, that's just something satisfying about it. Anyway, once you're inside the gate lines for the JR East Shinkansen lines, there's only four platforms to choose from. And as mentioned, us will be leaving from track number 21. There is a small waiting room here if you have a longer wait. But I think we should go and look at some high speed trains instead. The platforms can be accessed via this escalator, stairs or lifts. Currently occupying our platform is a Tanigawa service bound for Gala Yosawa a special ski resort station only open in winter. That service is operated by my favorite type of Shinkansen train, the E7 series. And as soon as that clears the platform, our train can then enter the platform. Arriving at 0807 from Sendai as Hayabusa service number 2, the train will be turned around and cleaned here at the platform in just 13 minutes before taking us to Hokkaido. The E5 series Shinkansen with its iconic long nose is built by either Hitachi or Kawasaki and can reach speeds of up to 320 km per hour. And after a quick turnaround, our train is now ready for boarding. I'll be traveling in the green car today, which is equivalent to a first class product on JR East Railway. All seats in green car are reserved seating. You can pick a specific seat when reserving online. Today I chose 5A, a window seat. Our train starts rolling out of Tokyo right on time at 8.20. And apart from being on board the fastest type of Shinkansen train, we are also catching one of the fastest services. Pretty much every JR East Shinkansen service to and from Tokyo also stop at Ueno, 3 kilometers further north. But we are on board one of the roughly 10 to 15 trains a day that skip it. And speaking of the route anyway, let's take a closer look at the map for today's journey. We are on board Hayabusa service number 7, 
We will be departing Tokyo Station, stopping at Omiya, Sendai, Moroika, Shin Amoi and Shin Hakodate Hukulto after covering a distance of 824 kilometers in 3 hours and 57 minutes. This gives the train an average speed of 208 kilometers per hour. We'll soon be reaching Omiya Station, which is our first stop in route. Omiya is an important interchange station, being the last station before the Hokuriku and Joetsu Shinkansen branch off towards the west. And after conducting the brief stop here, we'll begin the long non-stop run up towards our next station, Sendai. This is also the first segment of the line where we can really pick up the speed, reaching our maximum speed of 320 km per hour. And even at these speeds, the train remains super comfortable, thanks to the train being fitted with an active suspension system, contributing to a smooth and comfortable ride. The seats up here in green car are also very comfortable, and as you can see, they offer a great amount of recline too. At your seat, you'll also find a coat hook, both on the wall, as well as in the seat in front. There's a tray table, that's very sturdy, especially for a flip down one. Here you'll find a small storage pocket, as well as a cup holder. There's also power outlets, one for every seat. In the center armrest you'll find a button for the reading light, as well as the controls to adjust the recline. In the other armrest you'll find a small table that can be deployed like this, and it's good enough for a little drink. The seats are among the most comfortable I've ever traveled in. They feel like a big armchair, which is really really comfortable to sit in. And as our train approaches our station stop in Sendai, we pass by the special E2 Shinkansen in the Disney World livery. Special liveries in Japan are very common. I, for instance, had another E2 series with a retro livery attached to the Yamagata Shinkansen I took, and down on the Sanyu Shinkansen you could also find a 500 series in a full Hello Kitty livery. Also here in Sendai, there's a great observation tower right next to the station, allowing you to view the Shinkansen trains from up above. Sendai is an important station to these E5 trains as this is where the maintenance center is located for the fleet. And speaking of this train, shall we have a look at the rest of the interior? Starting with the most luxurious offering on board, Grand Class. This is a product above the usual green car, in a 1 plus 2 layout with large reclining armchairs. As I'm technically not allowed to even be up here, as I only have a green car ticket, let's get back down to the green car. In between Grand Class and the green car, you'll find a sink for the toilets. As unlike what is common practice in Europe, inside the toilet room there's not a proper sink. And like all trains in Japan, the toilets on board here are spotlessly clean and fully functional. On board there's also an accessible toilet. And in the vestibule you'll also find some limited luggage storage space. Continuing into the green car, we see that the seats are laid out in a 2 plus 2 layout. Shinkansen trains are fairly wide, so this is not that much difference to 1 plus 2 you'd expect to see in Europe. Also offered in the green car is the magazine, which you'll find by the doors, as well as blankets. A bit further down we get to the ordinary car, which is laid out in a 2 plus 3 layout. Again, the seats here are perfectly comfortable, but a benefit of the green car is definitely there's no middle seat. As we continue to head north, we start to see the first snowfall. This is Moroika Station, the last junction point along the Tohoku Shinkansen, where the small Akita Shinkansen diverges. After our stop here, our Shinkansen train will also get a bit slower. As the line from the section here up to Shinamoi is only built for just 260 km per hour. As there's no dining car on board, 
and only a trolley service is offered, I would recommend bringing a bento box from the station in Tokyo. And soon enough, we approach Shin Amoy station. This is the end of the Tohoku Shinkansen operated by JR East. In practice though, many services through operate onto the Hokkaido Shinkansen, with JR Hokkaido taking over the trains from here. Despite this being the slowest part of our journey today, it's probably also the most interesting. The Seikan Tunnel, being the longest underwater tunnel in the world, was actually not built for high-speed trains. Opened in 1988, the tunnel was originally part of just the normal narrow-gauge network. But in 2006, standard-gauge tracks were added to allow Shinkansen services to operate. Which is why you see three rails on the track next to us. And just like that, now we are coming up on the tunnel entrance for the Seikan Tunnel. And even though the tunnel supports higher speeds, the shockwave created by faster Shinkansen trains would be enough to potentially derail a narrow gauge freight train, which limits the speed to 160 km per hour. Inside the tunnel there is actually two stations, that was closed with the conversion of the tunnel to take Shinkansen trains. We can just about catch a glimpse of one of them here. And after roughly 20 minutes underground, we emerge on Hokkaido. And wow, what a stunning place this is with all the snow. And shortly afterwards, we approach Kikunai Station, which is where the dual gauge section ends, at this snow protected junction, where you can see the dual gauge tracks ends and the narrow gauge tracks diverge off to our right to join the old main line. Being one of the faster Hayabusa services, we are non-stop through this station. And as we are now nearing Shin Hakodate Hokuto, it's about time to talk about the future of this line. As the current terminus is only temporary, while JR Hokkaido works to extend the Shinkansen line all the way to Hokkaido's main city, Sapporo, by 2031. This will reduce journey times between Tokyo and Sapporo from the current 7 plus hours down to somewhere around 4 to 5 hours. And as we are now approaching the end of our journey, let's take a closer look at what a ticket for this trip costs. A ticket in the green car will set you back 32,500 yen, which is about 200 euros. Pricey, but remember this is for over 800 kilometers of high speed rail travel. There are no discounts for buying in advance. But do consider getting a JR Pass, as you could save a lot of money using this if you plan to do a lot of high-speed rail travel in Japan. And just like that, here we are arriving into our final stop, Shin Hakodate Hokuto, right on time. It's a short 15 minute wait for the train onwards to Sapporo, but that's for a future video. Thank you so much for joining me on this trip. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, as I try to upload a new one every Sunday. You can also follow me over on Twitter at IntercitySimon. I usually post live from my travels over there, so it's a great place to get a sneak peek at what videos might be coming to the channel in the future. Thanks for watching!